Good afternoon, good afternoon. God bless you. God bless you this afternoon. I pray that you guys are blessed and that you guys are having a blessed day. What's going on, Brother Joe? God bless you. Amen. I hope you guys are having a really, really good day. I'm trusting God and walking faithfully and just living for him in a powerful way truly god is worthy of all praise honor and glory there is nobody like him there is none that can be compared to him and so this afternoon i just want to share a few things with you all you know because you know one of the things that oftentimes in in ministry there's a fine line between what we do for God and what we do thinking that we are, you know, pleasing God, but we're really pleasing ourselves. Um, one of the things that I love what Jesus says, you know, Jesus was so cool. <laughs> he was so cool, um, you know, because just his mannerisms in the way that he operated, you know, and just how he walked and traversed this earth was just so cool. It's such a, a marvelous thing. And specifically, what I'm talking about right now is that I'm talking about how Jesus says that no one can come unto me except the Father first draw them, right? He says no one can come unto me unless the Father draws them. And then there was many other times that really stemming from, cause you know, he was God in flesh, you know, in the book of Genesis, it talks about that God worked six days and on the seventh day he rested from all of his labor, right? And so the powerful thing that I see in that is that God is not disturbed by what's going on in the world and neither should we be. We should not be disturbed. Our duty is to keep the path open, you know. Um, salvation is more than just words that we speak. Salvation is more than just your gifts and your talents that you use. Um, salvation is more than just my sermons or lessons. It's more than just, you know, like some people will say, well, you know, let's let's get them all in the church. It's more than just that. Salvation, salvation is really about the work, the move, and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit working through us. And when you look and study the life of Christ and how he behaved, you know, it goes against conventional knowledge and wisdom, you know, um, because in one sentence, he tells a woman, it's not meat to give the children's bread to dogs. And this woman stays there and goes, yeah, that's true. But the dogs wait at the table. In another instance, he tells a woman, in essence, Forget about everything you're talking about. Go get your husband, the woman at the well. And this woman's life was changed, right? He sees another woman who was caught in adultery and he agrees with the crowd and tells them that if you have no sin, then you pick up the first stone and you stone her to death, right? And this life, this woman's life was changed, right? When you look at the life of Lazarus, the life of Lazarus, Lazarus dies 
But first he was sick. And the scripture says, Jesus tarried a little bit longer. And so I'm here to tell you that oftentimes the way that we think God moved, God doesn't move. He works in ways to perform, miracles to perform, past finding out. One of the things that we have to do is that we got to keep shining the light and the love of Christ. The word of God did not say, by your sermons shall the world know who you are. No. The word of God says, by your love one for another. When we have love for God's people, when we love God's children, when we walk in harmony, the world looks at that and goes, wow, I've never seen nothing like this before. And it, and it causes them to long for it. It causes them to desire it. And there's a lot of people that put ministry over love and kindness and sweetness and just hospitality you know the scripture says that um, the queen of Sheba came to test Solomon and to test him with all all the wisdom that she heard that he has I'm gonna go and check this guy out and see what kind of wisdom he got right and the scripture says when she came there and she saw order in his house she saw the servants love to be in his presence. The scripture says there was no more spirit left in her to challenge him. Why? Because she saw order and God's love and God's, um, God's ways in his home, right? And that spoke of God. Think about this, and I wanna share this with you for, for many of us who believe that it takes 12 steps or 13 steps or it takes, you know, you got to do this and you got to do that. Think about this, right? Jesus did not come in the fashion or the ways that the world, including the church, expected him to come. He came weak and beggarly. And yet and still, the scripture says in John chapter 1, we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, right? So when we saw Jesus, one scripture in, I believe it's in Isaiah, says that when we saw him, we did not desire him. There was no comeliness in him. There was nothing that we can consider noteworthy. But yet and still, he was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And, and one of the things that I've shared with many people, as you, those of you who have been following me recently know that we are doing this teaching on uh, evangelism and discipleship. And part of that is not just what you say. It's not what you say. It's not, it's not really what, what words come out of your mouth. It's really about what exudes from your heart. What exudes from your heart. That's what the Holy Spirit works in. The Holy Spirit works in the love of God that is flowing through you. The scripture says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So, so the light that I share, the light that is emulating from me is the light that will draw people to me, right? Now, when you study the life of Jesus, you did not find right away that Jesus gave his, his disciples instruction on how to live. No. What he did rather was he expressed to them the difference between this kingdom and the kingdom that I come from. He expressed to them the difference between uh, what is holy and what is unholy. What is righteous and what is unrighteous, what is pure and what is impure. He expressed to them the importance of deciphering and discerning the difference between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And so one of the things that I you know, tell people, it's not about your sermons. It's not about your sermons. It's about what do you believe? If you believe the kingdom of God is the kingdom of light and this 
kingdom of light is a good kingdom. It's a powerful kingdom. It's a sure king. It's a sure foundation. If you believe that, then what happens is that by virtue of your belief, it will flow from you. It will flow from out of you. The, the word of God, Jesus told the woman at the well, if you believed in me, he said, then out of your belly shall flow living rivers of water. Right? It's going to come out of your belly. Why? Because of the fact of that the kingdom of God is not with words. It's not with words. The kingdom of God is not with words. It's what you have in the depths of your soul. Right? If you believe it in your heart, then the Holy Spirit will use all of your flaws, all of your issues, all of your drama, all your mistakes. The Holy Spirit will use your humanity. He will use your marriage. He'll use your parenting. He'll use uh, your finances or your financial management, your stewardship. He'll use all those things to speak of his kingdom and of his glory. And it will cause people to want and to crave what you desire. Now, let me share this with you because many folks don't really think about this. Remember, the word of God says, and God himself said these words. God says, you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul. Then the book of Psalms says, a broken and a contrite heart, God will not despise, right? Now, what do I mean by that? Is this, that the world is, a lot of people in the world, and even some believers, are only looking for the fishes and loaves of bread, right? So like, for example, if I as a man or as a preacher or as a church, if I open my door and give food to the community, guess what? Community is going to come in. If I open up a daycare center in my church, right? And this daycare center is a good daycare center, then guess what? It's going to draw people. And you'll have people saying, I love my church. And they really love the church because the church is offering them fishes and loaves of bread. And that's why Jesus had to come to a point in his, in his journey, in his missionary journey, where he said to the, uh, the people who was following him, he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be my disciples. So what I've found over the course of my life is that by sharing the love of God, the Holy Spirit will unction you when the heart of somebody coming to you is open to receive his gospel. And you can share with them of the kingdom. Look at what Jesus said to his disciples. He says, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but not unto them. Okay? For the scripture prophesied and said, um, in seeing you will not see, and in hearing you will not hear. Right? So the fact is, is that when the Holy Spirit is the only one who can save people, the only one, not my church, not my ministry, not my testimony. In fact, when the word of God talks about my testimony, it talks about that my testimony is good for me defeating Satan. You find that in Revelations. My testimony, the blood of the lamb, and that I did not consider my life worth saving unto death, right? But the testimony that is for the world is the testimony that when the world falsely accuses you and then they watch you and watch you and watch you and they can't find no reason to hold you guilty then the word of god says that's a testimony to them but what am i saying to you tonight today to excuse me this afternoon um this afternoon what i want you to know is that this salvation doesn't come from anything that we do it comes from the work and the power of the Holy Spirit and when you allow for his work to be in you people will be led to you and what it will do mind you it's not gonna be led to your positive thinking and your you know positive frame of mind 
But what's going to happen is that they're going to ask you about Jesus. Because they're going to recognize you got what I don't have. And so I just want to share that with you this afternoon. Make sure that you are um, applying the kingdom of God in your heart. And in doing that, God will use everything that you are to lead people to him. God bless you.